Good morning. It's Saturday, which means millions of golfers are going to be playing today all around the world. The vast majority of them are going to be playing with the same guys they've played with for years and no doubt making exactly the same score as they have for years. Perhaps the thing that's getting in your way is peer pressure, having to copy what your mates do. Can we play more intelligently than that and lower our scores? The first hole here is 392 yards. It's begging for driver. But in reality, all we want to do on this first few holes is to get the golf ball on the golf course safely. Now there's a valley in front of the tee that we've got to get across. I haven't a clue how far it is, to be honest. So with a, a new rangefinder, from Go 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 Sport, we can find out. It's only 185 yards to cross this valley. So we can take a club that's gonna get us in place, something with loft, something that's easier to hit. Well, I can't get away from the fact this is a long par four. So my weapon of choice is the three wood. And down the wind, it proved to be the longest drive I've hit down here, regardless of club. Yeah, the rangefinder can help us save an awful lot of shots. I got 127, but with the slope, it's 129.8 yards. That's a bit of a push for my nine iron. If I was just to simply get at this kind of distance, I'm going to be up short. The flag is on the front. I want to go past it. So even though this is downwind, it is most definitely not my nine iron. It's the eight. With the flag on the right, I most definitely have to go left of that. I need the uphill putt. But that's a semi-thin. And it's right, which is not the place to be. This is horrible, putting down the hill. There's nothing you can do about it except hit the hole. You just got to accept you're going past. And then it's down to the amount of effort you put in coming back. You know, don't get frustrated at this. Work at it. The second hole. It's a dog leg to the left. And the further you hit it, the quicker you run out of room down the right. Now to get over the brow of the hill is about 160 yards. I've just checked it with this. You can't quite see the brow because it's, you know, it's a little bit over. But even a modest slice is going to be out of bounds in 210 yards. Can we pick a club that's going to get over the mound, on the down slope, get some run out, without being any, in any danger of going OB right. Now your mates might hit driver at you. Uh, your mates might hit driver here. Well, let them get on with it. If you think it's a five wood, then it's a five wood, isn't it? Well, from the top of the rise, you can see what I mean. It gets very narrow and very tight on the right. And the fairway slopes that way, so any slice is in bother. Do you know what, even with um, five wood, I am five paces away from losing my ball in the ferns here. The out of bounds a long way that way. So anybody hitting driver off the second down the wind today who leaks it a hair to the right, They've lost their ball. They're going back to the tee box. Now I've got 131 to the flag. Do you know what? I've, I've never known a rangefinder as quick as this at picking up the flag. But it, as well as 131 flag, I got 115 to this big tree down the right that I do not want to go in. So by having information, we can make an intelligent decision. And my decision is left of this flag even though it might give me a harder putt 
than if I take it on. However, you can't legislate for hitting the ball thin. I guess I'm looking at this video afterwards. Well, the tree I wanted to avoid is that very thick Leylandi. They are horrible trees on a golf course. Yeah, they might be green in winter, but the rest of the time they're disgusting if you put a ball into them. That was a little firm, not far off, three and a half feet, but it's down the hill. Something that we want to avoid if we want to play smart golf is downhillers. Don't just use a rangefinder to see where you want to go. Use it to see where you don't want to go. So for instance that big poplar up there in the left rough over the brow of the hill is 217. So I definitely don't want to get caught up behind that. Anything a little to the right of that is good. Now I would say, why not use your three wood here? It's gonna give you the height to get over the brow of this hill, but it's into the wind. So I think driver's the correct club. Always be flexible on whatever the wind's doing. One fifty two playing one fifty into the breeze. I think that calls for a six iron. That would be pretty intelligent rather than trying to hit my seven iron out of my socks. Well, if you did actually bother to warm up before a round, a lag like this isn't a problem. Right, we've made it to the fourth, a short par four with water down the right. 282 yards from the yellows and I'll bet a lot of people with their mates stand up here with the driver seeing how far they can muscle it down there and undoubtedly for probably two out of the four of them it ends in tears so you've got to do something a little more sensible if you're going to be beating your mates so I've got a four iron 22 degrees seven wood 21 degrees and a hybrid of 19 degrees. All of these will put me in a decent position to wedge it on, to putt, take my par, take my money off the guys who just put a ball in the water and move on. So you've got to pick the best one for you. Now I would prefer that you go get some lessons so you're not afraid to hit any of these. But let's be realistic for a moment. We're into the breeze, the four iron's not long enough. The seven wood with 21 degrees is going to too, go too high, it's going to stall, it's going to come up short. So the option for me is the 19 degree three hybrid. Yeah, that'll do it. I do hope that if you've got a hole similar to this, that you can have the discipline to hit something shorter rather than your mate's driver. Don't give in to peer pressure. Well, I've come over the top, hit it off the toe, high right. It's on the golf course. I'd use my driver, it damn well won't be. You know, I get comments when I play in competitions. What are you hitting a five wood for? It's a driver. And I also get comments on my channel, things like, Oh, you're playing old man golf, or boring golf, or it's only fun if you hit your driver as hard as you can. Well, that's not how to play golf. 
So I've walked off the fourth green, I'm one over par. Now if you've managed to show the same restraint as you warm up, because the vast majority of people don't warm up before a round of golf, if you've managed to make better decisions, ignore your mates, chances are you're beating them too. Even if you've made four bogeys, you'll still be meet, beating your mates. And you won't be staring into this pond over here, wondering where your four pound Pro V1 or TP5 has got to. Yeah, so uh, use the gray matter. Get better at golf, score lower, take your mates money. They won't laugh at you when you're taking their money. On to the next. This tee is going backwards. Just wait till the white tee is when it's over 200. It says 181 yards today, except that it's not. It's 191 because of the slope. So use the tool to inform you what club that you really have to take, rather than just looking at the tee markers beside the tee box. Well, sometimes no matter how hard you try, you are going to hit a bad shot. And you will probably follow it up with another bad shot. In this case, the rough shuts the club face and it goes left and long. Now you've got to deal with your mess. Now there's a hell of a lot of borrow on this and I've found over the years that if you over borrow, the ball stops by the hole. If you under borrow, and it slides down the hill four or even five feet away, which is missable. So I have deliberately played for a two putt. I did not try to hold that. Number six, a long par four into the wind and uphill. I'll bet 80 or 85%, maybe even 90% of the people playing this today have not reached into it's a long way. Smashing your driver, you might get an extra four yards, but you also might get out of sync. And if you get out of sync with such a long shaft, you're out of bounds. You're going for another ball. So if this is unreachable in two, except for the really good players, why try to reach it in two? I got a three wood. This new rangefinder zone in from Go 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 Sport. It's got a 500 yard pin lock. Okay. Well, this is playing 398, 412 for the slope. I was once asked in match play, do you play the course or do you play the man? And I always answer, I play the course. I've got to play the course my way in order to beat the other guy. I can't play it his way and belt my driver everywhere. So no matter what happens, no matter what is said about you taking less than driver, then you must carry on and do so. Now this is smart. 64 yards on a steep upslope taking more club and swinging easy rather than the small club and trying to swing out my socks. So if you want to play golf your way, do it. You'll beat your mates, I assure you. 146 playing 151. Can't feel the wind here, but it's most definitely up there left to right. So we can play well left, perhaps take a club that's only going to reach the front of the green because we don't want to be in this hedgerow. So while your mates are trying to fire it up the green and they're going in the hedge, you can go in their wallet and take some more money out, can't you?
<laughs> you know, as tee shots goes, that was pretty ugly. But look where your mates are. Oh. Now you might consider what I'm doing as being defeatist. It's not, it is positive. We're making good decisions. Rather than starting out on the first tee with a driver and we don't know where the hell it's going. We've started with loft. We've got, played the first four holes. We got on the scorecard. We're already getting into our mate's wallet. From there, we've made good decisions. The par four up the hill. As I say, I bet 85% of the people today did not reach in two. By taking a bogey, by deciding on the tee, I'm going to play for a bogey, or with a little bit of luck, a one putt par perhaps. We've done no worse than anybody else, and we've done a hell of a lot better than quite a few. Well, eighth tee, by now you should know how well you're striking the ball and what shape you've got today. So get the driver out, aim for your shape, aim for what the wind might do to the ball as well, and play. This is a positive move. So let's be positive. Let's stripe one down here and then see if we can reach the green in two. Because at least this one's flat and not uphill. You know, not everyone who uses a rangefinder uses it for golf. Some use it for hunting. This will go out to 2,500 yards. Now it's a little over to a thousand to the clubhouse according to Google Earth. Shall we check? One thousand and fifty-one and a half yards back to the clubhouse. The optics on this is fantastic. I'm going to see if I can find my car in the car park beyond. 1,131 yards to my car. And I don't know if you've heard, but we got a lot of rumbling over there. There's a thunderstorm coming in. I think I'm going to need that information, try and figure out how long it's going to take me to run back there. I'm amazed by this, the zero in. The speed at which it picks up the flag, how far away from the green I can pick up the flag. So much easier than anything I've used before. And of course, it goes out at two and a half thousand yards. Wow. 203 yards. So what's the intelligent thing to do? Wedge, wedge? Not really. You know, to go wedge, wedge. If it was six iron sand wedge, perhaps that would be the intelligent thing to do. I think the smart thing to do from 203 to a very wide green and no bunkers is to have a pop at it. Sometimes the smart thing to do is to do what you really, really want to do and have a bash at it. A very long lag and uphill all the way. This is where we learnt our pace on the putting green before we came out. So, you know, if, if your mates are giving you jibes, ignore it. Play your own game and beat them. You should have just heard that rumble. I think it's getting closer. So I'm going to have to shut up and play and possibly run. This ninth is absolutely perfect for the driver. If you hit fairway wood, if you go cautious, you can't see the green for your second shot. You've resigned yourself to that bogey. And remember, smart golf isn't always resigning yourself to the bogey. This fairway is so wide. If we can aim down the left and if we hit that big slice, we're in no worse a position than if we'd hit a five wood off the tee. But if we hit it straight, we can see the green. If we can see the green, 
we can be more confident over the second shot and we can take even more money out of your mate's wallet. Aiming well left for my fade and the slope of the ground. And that's absolutely perfect. You try playing golf with this in the background. Ball below the feet, flag on the right near the bunker. I don't want anything to do with that, so I aim well left and I settle for 20 feet left of the flag. So another par foot up for me. Well, as I'm averse to thunderstorms, I'm gonna call it a day. I wanted to go up 10, it's a short par four with no hazards. So it's definitely a short par four where you would take driver as opposed to a hybrid. But that stuff says I gotta run. It's rubble for me now, is it? No. Oh, there you are.